I don't understand. Welcome to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and today I'm bringing you my January TBR. Hopefully you're watching this and everything's gone well because I have a new camera and a new microphone and I genuinely don't know how to work all of it yet. So we're learning, we're learning together. Please enjoy, hopefully, very crisp footage and audio and hopefully not the audio of Skyrim, which is happening in another room. As you'll know if you've watched my resolutions video, if you haven't watched that, that's available now. I'm trying to read 200 books in 2020, which means around about 16 and a half books a month, just over, 16 to 17 books. I have 17 books on this list, and I say we just work through it. This first book is a hangover from my December TBR, which I think was a hangover from my November TBR. You're getting the picture. Uh, this is Amara by L.L. McNeil. The main reason I need to finish this is I owe L.L. McNeil a huge present. She won a giveaway, and I still haven't sent her it because I'm a terrible person. So that's another thing I'm going to try and do early this new year, is send her the stuff I've promised I will send her. But she sent me the copy of the third book in her World of Lenaria series, which is called, obviously called Amara. I have the other two books in the series I've read, which are Moroda and Palom. I'm really looking forward to reading this. If you don't already know about the World of Lenaria, it's a self-published series involving dragons, shape-shifting, various animals, uh, hot air, balloons, airships, airships is the word I'm looking for, all of those things and more. Uh, the first two books are really really good fun, I'm looking forward to getting this. As you can see it's a little bit hefty which is, I think is why it got left to the bottom of my pile. So this is I think probably going to be like the third book I pick up this month and I just got to finish it come hell or high water. Another book that is a hangover from last month's TBR is The Pursuit of William Abbey. Uh, I left it at work. That's my only reason for not reading it. I meant to read it while I was on holiday and I left it at work and I don't want to buy a Kindle copy of a book that I already have so it's gone into my January TBR. More books that are hangovers from last month. Look forward to my wrap up where I apologise profusely for failing at all of these things. Joe Abercrombie's The Blade itself. Uh, this is the first book in... I can't remember what this series is called... I don't know but this is the first book in that series, trilogy, I think it's a trilogy. Editing Judith will have to put that on the screen. I started this, uh, I read a couple of pages of it but I was really stressed the day that I started it even though I was on holiday. I just thought no gonna put this down, gonna give this its due, it's on my list for January. Um, this is Grimdark, I think it's multiple POV, we'll find out. I don't know a lot about this as you can tell so we'll see how it goes. And another hangover from last month, are you sensing a theme, is City of Lies by Sam Hawke. This is a book about poisoning, I don't know much else about it, my 2020 resolution to talk better about books has not featured for these books that are hangovers from last month. On to some review copies, there's quite a lot of books publishing in January, I read a lot of them at the end of the year, they'll all be in my wrap up. First up I have The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep by H.G. Parry. This is coming out from Orbit in late January, I think it's around about the 24th, 28th. I have already started, I started it very late last night. Um, I'm about 10% of the way in and this book is about two brothers, uh, the older brother of whom, whose name I've forgotten, a, is looking after keeping an eye on his younger brother, they, even though they're adults, uh, who is a professor of English at a university in New Zealand uh, and his younger brother has the power to pull fictional characters out of books. And the impression I'm getting, uh, as I say, I'm only 10% in, is that it's through literary analysis. So it's really interesting. Um, I think this might be a book lover's book. I'm really hoping it will be. I think it's going to be really good. I'm enjoying it so far. I like the way that the characters are bouncing off each other, that kind of brotherly love with a little bit of animosity there but not so much that they just hate each other and aren't looking after each other. I'm interested to see how this one goes. This one, as I say, I'm already reading it so hopefully it will be done very soon. Next up I have Prosper's Demon by K.J. Parker. This is a fantasy novella coming from Tor on the 28th of January. The unnamed and morally questionable narrator is an exorcist with great follow-through and few doubts. His methods aren't delicate but they're undeniably effective. He'll get the demon out, he just doesn't particularly care what happens to the person. Prosper of Shams is a man of science, determined to raise the world's first philosopher king, reared according to the purest principles. Too bad he's demonically possessed. I haven't read a lot of novellas. I think the last novella I read was To Be Taught If Fortunate, so it'd be a really good short quick win for this month. Next up I have a February book, this is Belle Revolte by Lindsay Miller who wrote the Mask of Shadows series which I still need to read the second book of. Clearly this one is coming first. I don't know a huge amount about this book, it comes out on the 1st of February from Sourcebooks 5 and it is about a girl called Emily who is a noble who wants to be a physician and a girl called... and a girl called Annette who wants to have a better life uh, and they swap lives and there's a revolution and unsurprising from the title uh, and I think it's probably one of these you know what's happening we don't know who's going who's who gotta keep secrets uh, I think it's gonna be really really good I really love Mask of Shadows I thought it was a really good YA staple um, so I'm really interested to see 
what this next book is like. Next up, I have A Queen in Hiding by Sarah Kozlov. This was sent to me by the lovely people at Tor, described as the ultimate fantasy for fantasy fans. Binge an entire series in four months. Um, I'm not 100% fan of the word binge, but you know, we'll go for it here. This comes out in January, and then they're releasing the next three books in the series month by month. I'm really interested by this. I don't know whether they've just got the author chained to a desk or if she's just happens to have already finished the series when they sold it. But yeah, I'm really interested to see how this goes and what it's like reading a series that bunched up, whether it does well, whether people burn out on it too quickly, who knows. But yes, this is about orphaned, exiled and hunted, Cerulea, Princess of Werendale, we're already getting there with the fantasy names, must master the magic that is her birthright, become a ruthless guerrilla fighter and transform into the queen she is destined to be. But to do it she must win the favour of the spirits who play in mortal affairs, assemble an unlikely group of we webbles? An unlikely group of rebels and wrest the throne from a corrupt aristocracy whose rot has spread throughout her kingdom. This sounds really, really good. Sounds much more like YA than adult fantasy, which is interesting, and they've compared it to Naomi Novik, Victoria Aveyard, Victoria Aveyard was the one that I really picked up on, it's very Red Queen feeling. We'll let you know by the end of the month. This next book comes out from Orbit on the 6th of February. This is The Last Smile in Sunder City by Luke Arnold. Uh, this cover is really reminiscent of Rivers of London, but I've heard from people that it, it isn't that at all. If you haven't heard of Luke Arnold, he's an actor, he's in Black Sails, and now apparently he's an author as well. Actor turned author would normally be a bit, bit of a red flag for me, but I have a friend who loves him as an actor and read this book and really enjoyed it, and I really trust her judgment. Hi, Asha. I should tell you what it's about. I'm Fetch Phillips, just like it says on the window. There are three things you should know before you hire me. Sobriety costs extra. My service is confidential. I don't work for humans. It's nothing personal. I'm human myself, but after what happened to all the magic, it's not the humans who need my help. You get in the Rivers of London kind of vibe. Um, I'm really, really interested in reading this. Next up, I have The Sisters Grimm by Mena Van Praag. This comes out from Random House on the 6th of Feb. I'm getting a head start on my February titles. It's gonna be great. This is... This is the story of four sisters Grimm, daughters born to different mothers on the same day, each born out of bright white wishing and black-edged desire. They found each other at eight years old, were separated at 13, and now, at nearly 18, it is imperative that they find each other once again. In 33 days, they will meet their father in Everwhere. Only then will they discover who they truly are and what they can truly do. Then they must fight to save their lives and the lives of the ones they love. Three will live, one will die. You'll have to read on to find out who and why. I mean, it does sound good. My camera battery died, which is probably a sign I should speed up just a little bit. Okay, we've got, we did the Sisters Grimm. I'm just gonna say whatever I was gonna say about that. It was, it was, I'm excited to read it, probably. Last on my list is another 6th of February book. This book comes out from Hachette Children's Group on the 6th of Feb. This is Deadfall by Simon Lelick. This is the third book in the Haven series. The first book in this series was an Oliver Twist retelling, uh, but in the modern world, lost children, finding each other, forming gangs, grown-ups are terrible, that kind of thing. But it, the second book got very, very dark, but was a very quick, easy read. Uh, this book, I don't know what it's gonna be like. Our city, our secret, our rules. The Haven is a secret organization run by kids for kids, but the police are onto them and Ollie's, of a friend Lily is locked up in an off-grid high security prison. Ollie and the Haven's investigations team are forced to choose. Do they hide away and protect what they have, or do they stay true to the Haven's mission, helping kids in trouble wherever and whoever they may be? It's a decision that will threaten the Haven's very existence. I quite enjoyed the first two books in the series. They were very young YA, um, and not really what I tend to read, but um, Clearly I've been gripped enough to request the third one, so we'll see how that goes. That's 11 books, and then I have one more before I pick from my reread jar. This is my audiobook read for January. I've already started this. I'm a few hours in because I listened to it very quickly. This is Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. This is the third book in the Assassin's Apprentice series. I've talked a little bit about this. I'll talk more about the second one in my wrap-up, but yes, really, really enjoying it so far. I don't want to talk too much about it because I think it would be spoilers for the first two books, but I'm reading that as well. That's also on my TBR. You're welcome. Who remembers me filling this in that video that was incredibly dull somehow? Right, I'm gonna pick five books from this. I'm gonna take some of the top out because it's a little bit full because I did it in card, not paper, because I'm a fool. Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I read this last year at some point. It was a gift slash hand-me-down from another book blogger. Hi, Justine. I liked it enough. I thought I might want to read it again. And the second book comes out reasonably soon, I think, Aurora Burning. Um, so it might be worth reading to determine whether I do or do not want to read that. This is a typical, typical, uh, one of those books where it's an unlikely group of people have to form a band of people in space. And obviously there's like the posh boy, there's the girl from the wrong side of the tracks. There's all of these kind of stereotypes and archetypal characters and they all come together uh, and there's probably evil that they have to defeat. I can't remember a huge amount about this. I remember Hot Space Elf. It will be good to revisit this. 
uh, and determine whether I want to carry on with the series. Next up I pulled Sweet Black Waves by Christina Perez. This will only be my second time reading this. Um, this is a retelling of Tristan and Isolde. I like this first one, I read it for my book a day in June in 2018 I think. So I kind of rushed through it and then the second one I really just couldn't get my head around so I thought I would reread this to try and see if I wanted to keep both books or not. So this is a keep it or don't keep it kind of decision. This is, you won't be able to tell, I don't know why I'm holding up to you, it's just a blue book, but this is The Winter Nights by Paul Stewart, illustrated by Chris Riddell. This is a book in the Edge Chronicle series. I pulled this from home when I was there for quite a while ago. I think this is part of the Quint saga um, in those books. This is one of my absolute favourite Edge Chronicles books. I think it's just so much fun and so lovely and there's a romance in it and there's a lot of kind of things coming to a culmination. Um, and some really interesting lore and things within. So really looking forward to rereading this. Pulling from a very difficult to manoeuvre S author shelf, this is A Gathering of Shadows by V. Schwab. This is the second book in the Dark Shade of Magic series. I put all of these on to reread this year and we've pulled book two, which is interesting. I think I thought three was gonna come up, but this is the one, if I remember correctly, this is the one with kind of games, like a magical gladiator fighting kind of thing. So interested to read this. I have the collector's edition because I'm fancy and have no self-control. And I've not actually read this collector's edition. I know it doesn't matter what format you read a book in, but it is one of those, I, why am I keeping it if I'm not reading it in that edition? Do I then have to own another edition? Who knows? Last but not least, it's Cinder by Marissa Mayer. This is the first book in the Lunar Chronicles, which is a four book series, which is kind of fairy tale retellings in space. They're sci-fi fairy tale retellings. I really enjoyed these the first time I read them. I have this one physically and I have the rest on Kindle um, because I wanted to read all of them. I really enjoyed this book the first time I read it uh, and I'm looking forward to reading it again. This is obviously a retelling of Cinderella, but it goes beyond that as the books go on. There you have it. I have 17 books to read in January. I think this is going to be a really great start to a year of reading. I'm looking forward to getting to most of these books and there are the ones that I'm a bit iffy on. I'll soon know if they're good or not. Let me know what you're reading in the comments below or link me to your TBR video if you fancy, if you have one. As ever you can subscribe if you want to follow my book reading, my book hauling and unhauling journey. You can comment, subscribe, you can follow me on all of my socials and I will see you in the next one.